was Imako's marriage and escape to freedom from the imperial family. On November 14, Mr. Comro and Miss Mako moved to New York to start a new life together. It had been a long four years of marriage turmoil. It has moved on to a new stage, but even though they're there, it's still a big topic of conversation in the weekly magazines and on the internet, and there's no sign that the turmoil will stop. This is a topic that the weekly magazines still cover extensively every week. Shukin Shincho has been calling it the Kamaro bubble because it has been the top selling issue for many weeks. In the November 25th issue of Shukin Shincho, the top article was titled Mako and K, the other side of goodbye to Japan. On the day of their departure on November 14th, there were about 100 members of the press gathered at Haneda Airport. When they arrived in New York, the Japanese media was also all there. According to the local agreement, they were not supposed to follow us after our arrival, as if to weave a gap in this rule. The Daily Mail published an electronic version of the scene of the Comoros' arrival at their new residence. In the November 25th issue of Shukin Bunchan, the top headline was Female Members of the Imperial Family Lament Over Mako Kamaro, The Rest of Us Will Be Troubled. The November 25th issue of Shukin Bunch Hun featured a commentary titled This Is How I See It, and it seemed to go on with a story that young people are yearning for Mako. Mako's way of life, in which she stuck to her will despite so much opposition is said to be an object of admiration for young women. There is also the thought that I believe that this rule breaking by putting my feelings first is a negative aspect of the open imperial family and the imperial family that walks with the people. There are those who feel that Mako's actions are threatening to undermine the traditions of the imperial family. In fact, from early on, the two of them agreed that the only way out of the imperial family was to get married and surrender. It was the only hope for the two of them. It was like a private escape plan for the two of them. There are many people out there who work their asses off to pay the rent and make ends meet, and that's just the way it is. There are many people out there who are working their asses off to pay rent and make a living, and that's just the way it is, even if they don't. They are being treated well, so please don't spoil them anymore. In Aksanamiak, Kako is said to be the one with the strongest will. Kako seemed to have a great fear that she would never be able to escape from this place. If she can't leave the imperial family, there is no point in living. To put it in an extreme way, she was so seriously troubled at the time that she was even willing to take her own life. It is likely that Kako was just in her adolescence when she was struggling with her thoughts. Escaping from the environment or home in which one grew up is a thought peculiar to that period, and it is not surprising that Mako and Kako had such thoughts. In particular, the Imperial family is basically a male-dominated world. So it may be natural for Mako and Kako, who also learned about gender in college, to worry about it as they grew up. In the November 11th issue of Shukin Bunchan, the article entitled Kamaro's True Strengths began as follows. In the November 11th issue of the Shukin Bunchan, the article titled Kamaro's A Real Ability began, the whole of Japan was in an uproar over the test results of one man. The article started from the premise that Mr. Kamaro was sure to pass the bar exam and would be able to find a job in New York, but it turned out to be the opposite. According to the article, the law firm in New York where Mr. Kamaro works was so overwhelmed with access from Japan that they had to block access to their website as of October 30th. The mistake started when a person who had not studied law at all even though he was working as a clerk at a law firm, got a scholarship and entered Fordham. Unfortunately, it also means that those who truly deserve the scholarship were not able to receive it that year. The graduation list is a proud testimony. I would like to know why my name is not on the graduation list of Fordham. In the November 11th issue of Shukin Shincho, 
there was a major feature titled The Tragedy of Mako San, the rejected who deceived the entire nation. There are those who say that the use of the imperial family didn't help her pass the bar exam and that she is in danger of being fired from her law firm. It seems to cover all the things that people seem to say on the internet. It's not that I don't like it, but it's just that I don't like it. Some people are worried about Comoro's livelihood because he failed the bar exam. But we are no longer living in an age where husbands earn money outside the home and wives are housewives. It's a good thing if the two of you can stabilize your spirits by leaving the land of Japan, where you are constantly bashed. The four-year-long Mako's marriage fiasco took a sudden turn this fall and also caused a huge social debate as newspapers and TV stations other than the weekly magazines were all involved. It also became a major topic on the internet. As a derivative effect of such a broadening of the scope of the story, even X hairstyle and clothes on TV were made into a story. In the video of the Comoros departure from Japan on November 14, the Darth Vader from Star Wars was seen on the chest of X shirt. In the November 25th issue of Shukenshin Show, it was reported, is this another message from Mr. Kamaru? The article says, is this another message from Mr. Kamaru? The t-shirt conveyed his intention to get revenge. The truth is, of course, we don't know, do we? It seems to me that Miss Kamaru is still going to use her royal privilege. And since the person she married is a human ATM with no withdrawal limit, she can do whatever she wants. Anyway. I think we need to strengthen the audit to prevent tax money from flowing to them in the future. I feel uncomfortable with the fact that there have been a lot of articles lately defending Miss Kamaru, saying that she is essentially very good but failed the exam because of various irregularities and that there is nothing wrong with her ability, which sounds like a meaningless excuse. The simple fact is that if you have no problem with your ability, you can take the exam. This is evidenced by the fact that 80% of the people who have taken the exam have passed it. This is exactly what I mean when I say it's not worth talking about. Before taking the exam, people are always saying he's a superman and he's going to pass the exam, but when the results come out, they are always making excuses. It's not a good look, to say the least. And I wonder if he doesn't understand that forcing himself to defend something will have the opposite effect.